Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are currently working on continuing our viewer contracts that we have selected right now. And currently the only ones that we have selected is Just a Dude's Where's Kevin contract and Robin Patnell's Reuse Recycle Rudd contract. Now we're going to pick up more of these. That's definitely a thing that's going to happen. So keep leaving them in the comments. But for right now, we're trying to clean up some of these. And I want to finally get to Where's Kevin. So this is going to be very interesting. We need to send a rocket to orbit and land the same rocket in the same flight to the space center to pick up Kevin, a previously dropped Kerbal, and go back to space all in the same flight. This doesn't say we can't refuel. So in theory, that's a possibility. So we're going to need to make a minimal orbit, land near this the KSC. Not necessarily at the KSC, but near the KSC. And then from there, pick up our Kerbal. So we're going to need to be able to lift the Kerbal up to the designated location. Okay. And then from there, return to orbit. Cool. Okay, so that seems relatively doable. For right now, we're going to hop into the VAB. I do want to do a parachute-assisted landing for this, if we can get away with that. The contract does not specify, so we can definitely use the atmosphere to our advantage here. So we're going to have this be based probably on one of our moon landers. Something like this. But it doesn't need to go this far, right? There's a lot here that we really, really don't need. So we're just going to, we're going to get rid of a fair amount of this. Okay, cost cuttings. That is going to be important here. We're going to ditch the docking port. We're going to ditch basically everything up here, RCS and the uh, science equipment. We do not need the science equipment for this flight, although it would be recovered. So it's probably fine to keep that, actually. Let me uh, just undo that. This all will be recovered, but we do not need the RCS for this, and we do not need the docking port. That's for sure. Things that'll be recovered are okay. I don't mind that. Let's put a Mark 16 parachute on here. We'll repack the parachute on the ground, and then we will... Let me get rid of that. There we go. We'll put on our drogue chutes. We'll put on our main chutes, like that. So we're going to have a lot of chute power here. I do want to ditch these photovoltaic panels. Upgrading them to something like a 1x6 would be very, very good. And we'll put a pair of those here. They're retractable, so that'll be absolutely fine. We're going to ditch all of this fuel here. That is all unnecessary. We're actually going to ditch this entire stage. So we get rid of that, and we just connect up like so. These struts should not be necessary. And this liftoff is still a lot, to be clear. <laughs> we'll be negative in terms of our contract, because this is a medium difficulty contract. We'll get 50k out of this. That said, we will recover up everything up here, which is like 14k of it. It's still a lot, but I think I'm okay with taking that loss. So now the question is, what would a landing with this look like? I think we should ditch the solid booster stages. This is going to increase costs, but I think we take this to be liquid fueled. So we put a Rockamax Jumbo 64 out here. We duplicate that and put a second one. Then we put hemispherical liquid fuel tanks here. I have this idea in my head that we land this. And then we detach these on the way up the second time. Now we're going to go negative in terms of costs here. And... I don't know about landing on a bicoupled situation like this. It might be a lot more stable if we were to not do the Rockamax size and if we were instead to go with like T800s. Uh, these would be tall boys for sure. 
and we do something a little bit more like this. Although, uh, yeah, something like this. Bring that down and have that stack be a bit more like this. Now, the reason why I would want to do this is for stability, right? For landing stability. Because now we have a little bit more margin here, or rather it's less expensive for us to quad couple this. So we would then have these be lifting off based on swivels. I don't even know if these swivels would lift this stack, let alone all of this. I mean, it's obviously not gonna lift all of this, right? But this is point two, three. The question I have now is if we quad couple this and put these in like this, point three, six. So it does actually lift this stack alone. That's a good sign. And then we're going to need to pull fuel, of course, in from each of these, like so. Now, if we were to refuel this, we would want to attach onto it with, ideally would be a grab arm. I don't think we have access to this. And this is going to be, who was it that did this? Just a dude's where, where's Kevin flyer. Okay. Just a dude's where's Kevin. Cool. So we'll save that and let's hop out to the to the research and development. We need to see if we have access to the grab, the, the grab claw. Because if we do, that'll make things a lot easier for fuel delivery. And Kevin delivery, in theory. We'll need to think about Kevin delivery for, for the record. That is something we'll need to do. So let's see here. Where exactly is that? Is that under like a form of coupling up here actuators oh it's actuators advanced grabbing unit right here that's what we need okay beautiful so we grab that that would be used for our refueling crawler that we would send over there with kevin kevin would ride on that that would be a separate thing that we would fully recover so obviously we're over budget right no doubt about that we move these together like so the question is, does this manage to get to space and land? That's an interesting question, for sure. I suspect the answer to that is no. I want to run a quick test of it. Let's see what this design looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to move around our parachutes here. We need to see if we can get this thing up into orbit and then land back at the KSC-ish, but I'm not actually interested in landing at the KSC for this simulation. I want to see how we go making our way into orbit without detaching these side boosters. Oh, they are not strutted together. We should probably do that. We should strut these on. They're very wiggly right now, and that's not a good thing. So we're going to hop down over here and strut these. We'll hop to quad symmetry and we'll just strut them in here and we'll strut them in up here as well. Cool. So, I mean, Kevin is going to need the ability to climb all the way up here, right? So one thing we should probably do is move up our photovoltaic panels like so. And then we're going to need a laddering system for Kevin to be able to climb up here, which is going to be exciting. But for now, I want to see how this goes through the atmosphere and how a landing might look. How good are our parachutes at slowing this down? How much fuel do we have to burn to land on? I have no idea what that's going to look like. We could launch with our upper tanks empty. And plan to refuel them on the ground. I feel like that's kind of going out of the spirit of the ch of the contract, which is supposed to be like an accident. It is an option, though, to launch with these all empty. And then refuel them once we get this thing back down to the, to the ground. So I'm going to go straight up here. That is slow off the pad. I thought that that was like 1.7 something, but apparently not. That is really slow off the pad. We may have to address that. That is another good argument for these fuel tanks being unfueled the first time through. We do need to move our parachutes down to here. So we're just going straight up here. I'm not attempting to achieve orbit with this particular design. And 
and we're going to be burned out of fuel with these pretty soon. I mean, I am looking to achieve orbit with this design, but not in this attempt. So we're just going to go until our apoapsis height here is, well, higher than this. I don't know. I'm not liking the power level on this first stage. Having it be refuelable is a must, in my opinion. What if instead of having it go like this, we pulled evenly from the tanks via having fuel flow through the radio, radial decouplers? That's a theoretical option. The other thing, of course, is we can swap the swivels for uh, LV T30s, which is, I think, a decent option. So these shut down, and they are now just a dead weight. We're still accelerating here, and we've got a lot of fuel in this tank. So I'm going to... Whoa, okay, it doesn't like physics warping. Noted. <laughs> We're going to revert that back to the vehicle assembly. I definitely want a little bit more pep off the pad. No doubt about that. So we're going to ditch the swivels here, and we're going to replace those with Reliance. Reliance are better in terms of sea level thrust. So that should be good. And what is their specific impulse? 265? They're actually slightly more efficient as well. They don't have the gimbal. But we don't care about that. We've got our fins. We've got our mainsail. That should be enough control. So we're going to move these down. We're going to move these drogue chutes and our regular chutes down. Okay. We'll save that. And we'll try this launch again here. The idea here is we go straight up. Hopefully we get moving a little bit faster off the pad this time. We were 1.12, which is a really low thrust to weight ratio. I didn't check to see what we are this time. I should have. The Reliance will help with that. We'll also get a little bit further with that higher specific impulse. Uh, 1.19. <laughs> That's not a lot better, is it? Not a lot better. But it immediately goes up to 1.2. So I guess it's reasonably fine. For the time being, I just want to go straight up here. I would love to see more power in this stage. If we really wanted to chew up the fuel, we could go for, like, vectors. That would really do it. But this whole landing and returning, I mean, in a rocket, that's complicated. Maybe we should space plane it. I'm bad at space planes. It would be a lot easier to do this contract in a space plane, to be clear. But I'm really bad at making space planes. We would be at this for a really long time. I'm probably going to do it via rocket. And this is... Just know that this is inefficient. <laughs> okay. So really, we don't have to go super high up. But I want to know how high up this does get. I'm guessing this would get us to orbit. But would it let us break and have fuel for, for this? I mean... We'd be able to pull fuel out of these tanks, actually. If we lifted the first time with these tanks fueled, we would then be able to transfer the fuel down into these tanks once we got into space. Hmm. Now that's an option. The contract does specifically state that we need to be in orbit. Okay. Okay. And then we'll have to land as close as possible to the KSC. I mean, that's going to be a thing. For the time being, we're just shooting straight up until we hit 70 kilometers. We've got a lot of fuel left here. Orbital velocity on all of this is still going to be interesting while maintaining these. I do think we're going to be better off having these not be dead weight. And doing fuel flow through the decouplers instead of having the fuel ducts. Okay, there's 70 kilometers. So at this point, I'm going to quick save just in case the physics warp breaks things. 
And then we're going to do this. Now, Flight Engineer is very bad at calculating suicide burns when there is air resistance in the mix. So we'll keep that in mind. We're going to be looking to see how this goes with landing. And you can see here we're not exactly straight up. That's because Kerbin is rotating underneath us, I think. But we're going to start heading back down now. There we go. And we are going to be accelerating quite a lot. No doubt about that. We can see this countdown. I'm going to follow it for now for purposes of this simulation. And yes, we're not going to be coming down exactly on the landing site. That's fine. I don't care about that. We are going to be targeting in the real run, doing this fairly close, but not exact. Two, one, and zero. Okay. So we're now decelerating. We should be in surface retrograde. There we go. Okay, I just get put out the drogues, but atmosphere is still too shallow for that. So we need to keep a fair amount of burn left in this, right? Where do we see our remaining fuel in this? Like our remaining burn time. It's just kind of broken. Okay, that's fine. Going to do mains now. There's the mains. And how are we going to be doing here is the question. Ooh, it wants to tumble around. Okay. There's some weakness in this joint. That's noted. The parachutes should pull us back around once they actually deploy. But this is the kind of thing we do want to figure out with our simulation. So that's good to know. Let's see what happens when the parachutes start to deploy. This is a pure test run right now on the landing part of this. I really want these parachutes to deploy higher. So we're probably going to make them deploy a little bit higher in the future. Definitely. There go the drogues. Oh, that bend looks awful. And the mains. Okay. This is actually kind of viable. We should probably reinforce this joint. And let's slow this right on down a bit. Cool. Maybe not quite that down. Hmm. Are we stable? Yeah, but we could have not been. It wanted to fall over there. There's no doubt about that. So at this point, the idea would be, A, we would be closer to the KSC. Like, we landed a ways away. But uh, that wasn't the point. We weren't targeting any particular location. So we now know that the parachute system actually works. Now, we didn't get to orbit here, right? Fuel would be a concern getting to orbit. We had this much fuel left over, and since we went straight up, that almost certainly would not get us to orbit without detaching this stuff. So, let's revert this back, and we've learned a few things. So we want to make some changes. First change, I want to have these enable crossfeed, and I want to get rid of these external fuel ducts. Second change, I want to put in some strut connectors that connect from here from like here ish to here there we go third change I'd like to have a little bit more SRB strap on power I feel like I don't know let's try an actual orbital run and see how much fuel we have left over we know that our actual landing burn didn't take all that much fuel right the parachutes did most of it Indeed, they did. Okay, let's see how this goes. Let's try an actual orbital flight here and see how much fuel that gives us. We're, we're not carrying the tanks, the side tanks, as dead weight this time, in theory. So that should improve things in that regard. It should be a little bit more efficient anyway. 
On the second route up, we can ditch these tanks. Which means that we could turn off this and apply... Mm, yeah, I don't think so. Let's just throttle up, see how this goes. We are pulling from the outside tanks here. Really? I expected it to pull from the center tank as well. Interesting. Maybe it'll pull from the center tank once these tanks run out. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. So obviously, we're currently working on seeing how much fuel we need to get to orbit and how this goes. It's going to be very interesting. No doubt about that. So that's 100 meters per second there. Let's start heading on over here. The real question that I have right now is will we have the fuel to pull this off? We can do a lot of arrow braking on the way in, right? Oh, and I meant to uh, increase the altitude that these deploy at. That's definitely something that we want to do too. So for now, we don't really want to go too far over, right? We're pretty slow off the pad. Increasing the thrust in this first run may not be a bad idea. We're about to run out of fuel in these side tanks. Let's see if these continue drawing. They do. Beautiful. So we're now drawing everything out of the center tank. That is kind of what I wanted. So that'll do. We're pushing our way upward right now. Apoapsis height is about 23 kilometers. Let's go ahead and head over towards Prograde. Still increasing time to Apoapsis, so that's looking good. And then it's mostly just going to be a matter of choosing the timing at which we come in, right? But that's going to be complicated to figure out that timing correctly, to get as close as possible to the KSC. Okay, so our Apoapsis height is currently 60 kilometers. We're going to keep pushing here for a while. Ooh, that's going down fast. Okay, that's 75 kilometers there. So now we're going to hop over here and look at entering orbit. 1,100 meters per second. I don't know if we have that. I think we need more speed off the pad, at least for our first run. Because keep in mind, the second run that we do it, we can detach all of this. We don't have to land on this, right? So we can use this fuel at that point, and that would be fine. So this would be okay for our second run. Our first run, I think I do want to make SRB assisted. Okay. For the time being, we're going to warp up a little bit as we coast. We do have a coast phase here, and start burning three, two, one, zero. I don't know that this gets us there, though. I really do think we need that SRB assist on the first stage. This would be completely fine for the second run. After we land. But that's going down fast. And that's what we've got. Okay. So we're about 200 meters per second short. Some of that can be dealt with by a slightly more efficient ascent trajectory. But I think that the way to go here is to have that first liftoff be heavily SRB assisted. Or at least a little SRB assisted. Get this thrust to weight up, essentially. So... I mean, we're already a little expensive here. What I'm going to look to do is attach on fairly cheaply some smaller SRBs out over here. And they would be, this is kind of getting Franken, Franken machined. They would be like thumpers, right? So thumpers would go in out here and they would be down like this. We would then have a little bit of additional hemispherical fuel. And that I would absolutely want to be done via fuel across flow like, oh, where are we? I'm, I'm completely dumb. There we go. This is what I'm looking for. 
I completely forgot what I was looking for. Cool. So something like that, and then we would, of course, need to strut these on. So that would go on like so. And these would be moved together like this. So now we can use these SRBs, which that only brings us up to 1.47, but that will get us a decent chunk further. We can use these SRBs here to accelerate us off the pad at a more reasonable rate. And then get ourselves into orbit. This should be more than that 200 some meters per second that we needed in terms of efficiency. And then we can land this via the technique we discussed previously. Hopefully. Get Kevin in, refuel, and go again, but this time without the SRBs. Because that time will be fine to get into orbit like this. So, that's the idea here. And it's quite the idea. <laughs> this is a bit of a monstrosity, a Franken rocket, but I think it'll do the trick. I really, really do. The real question is, how can we nail that landing timing? Easiest way to do it would be to kill our horizontal velocity and drop straight down over the KSC. But this design definitely doesn't have the fuel in the first stage for that. But we can move this fuel down, remember. We can move that fuel into these tanks and that would be absolutely fine. And then refuel this on the ground. So yeah, I think that's going to be the idea. It is time to put a cut in here, but I think this is going to work. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and we're going to have to make a, an ability for Kevin to get in here or something he can get into down here, one or the other. Likes, comments, subscribes, bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, James, Shadow Wolf, Mlohan80, Rogue Corvid, Kentogan, Andy Magar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.